Well, good afternoon. I want to thank uh, Cliff and Mike and uh, Bennett for inviting me. Uh, there's little that a fighter pilot likes to talk about more than himself, but uh, the airplane happens to be one of those things. And, uh, and, and my, my kids, in case they see this. <laughs> you know, I, the video, uh, I have to admit, I got a little uh, uh, choked up. I think about that time, April of 1991, and as a lot of you know, we were coming back, uh, or starting to come back from Desert Storm at that time. So I think about the emotion of the country, and then you attach the, uh, the emotion of uh, winning the, the, uh, the EMD to get to produce the, motor, the engine for the F-22. Uh, and it, it, was, it had to be a very emotional time uh, for all of you. But uh, I'm going to try to make my comments on behalf of the uh, warfighter. It's really the only perspective uh, I have. It's really all I've ever uh, done and may ever do that's uh, uh, constructive with my life, again, except for my children. Um, and so I'm going to try to take it just a theme of uh, the F-119 uh, that's encased by the mighty uh, F-22 and just give you a perspective and a thank you and congratulate you on, uh, on, what, you've, on what you've done. Um, it's important that this is a celebration. I think at times we become so keenly focused uh, on the issues, on the challenges, trying to turn those challenges uh, into opportunities that uh, Bennett missed, that we forget sometimes to celebrate. And I can tell you early on in the F-22, when we were trying to get to that IOC state, we spent days and hours and weeks and months talking about all the challenges, and we really didn't uh, celebrate the successes. And one of the things we took for granted was the F-119. We didn't discuss the F-119, we didn't worry about the F-119, we just went out and flew the airplane and worked all the other issues. That in itself is probably where I should conclude my remarks because that's very telling and laudable that it was uh, the United States warfighter didn't climb in the aircraft worrying about, uh, worrying about the engine. But this morning as I was flying up here, I thought it was time to prepare some remarks, so I, I asked the uh, flight attendant for a napkin and I began to write some stuff down. This is the kind of planning we do in the fighter pilot world. Um, <laughs> And it occurred to me how revolutionary uh, what all of you were doing. If you look up the definition of, of revolutionary, I mean, a dramatic change to the standard. I'm sure there's a little uh, picture of the F-119 in Webster's Dictionary. It's truly revolutionary. When you think about the very beginning with Frank Gillette and his team in 1990, they come into, you know, I'm sure it was a chalkboard, and they go, hey, we've got to start developing this, all the way to that last motor being de delivered in, in December truly revolutionary. It has changed and will change forever the way we think of, of fighter aviation. And then the innovative piece of it, you know, and, and I, will, I will list off a couple things, but you need to completely understand. I don't really understand what any of them are. I'm just a benefactor of them. But the things like the split case and the IBRs, I do understand the thrust vectoring, completely innovative. And one of the keys to innovation, true innovation, is that it can be very disruptive. And as uh, Colonel Gutterman mentioned, it has been very disruptive for those that might seek to do harm to the United States. Our enemies very, very, very aware of the capability that an F-22 wrapped around two F-119s brings to the U.S. warfighter. So it's been disruptive to them, and that's good for us. As he mentioned, spending billions of dollars trying to find a way to counter the F-119 uh, and capability, and soon to be you know, the, the uh, F-35 wrapped around an F-135. And it's also it was disruptive to us uh, you may or, or may not be aware, uh, fighter pilots can be arrogant. It's, it's true. My wife assures me it's true. <laughs> and so we thought we knew how to employ airplanes. And we were pretty good at employing fifth generation airplanes, proven fighters. I'm not a big fan of the word legacy, but the proven fighters. And so we thought we would take those tactics, those techniques, those procedures, and we would just use them in a fifth generation fighter. It took us a while because we're not the smartest lot, but we figured out that that was not going to work. It was disruptive to us. We had to start from scratch, again, go back to that blank chalkboard and figure out how to really use the capability that had been handed, uh, handed to us. And it was disruptive to our combatant commanders. It was disruptive to our, uh, across our force because we had to go and find, figure out how to integrate all of this capability that was handed to us through the F-119 and the F-22 to defend our areas of responsibility all across the world, but innovative and revolutionary, and you should be extremely, extremely proud of that. As Bennett mentioned, the key characteristics of the F-22, uh, 
we would go on road shows initially when the F-22 was first fielded because uh, we needed to get the word out about the capability that it had. And so we talked about the stealth, we talked about uh, the speed, the ability to super cruise, the maneuverability. You, if you've not seen the demonstration, the F-22 demonstration at an air show, I highly recommend it. You YouTube, uh, get on Google and look at it. It's cartoon physics. You, you truly expect a canopy to come up and Wiley Coyote will crawl out of the airplane. It's unimaginable. I'm sure if, if you know, Bernoulli and Newton could get together and see what the F-22 does, they wouldn't believe it. It defies our, law, you know, our laws of man, man flight. So you've got that maneuverability, you've got the integrated avionics, and then of course, the proven, improved logistics. And every time I think of that, I, I think of that picture of Frank Gillette under there in his full mop Kim gear, and he's got his wrench, and that's why the maintainers loved the airplane. So those five key characteristics, I would argue, and I could do that because uh, um, we like to argue, um, I would argue that the F-22, uh, those five key characteristics, the F-119 touches each one of them in a more significant way than any other single system uh, on the airplane. Certainly the speed. Uh, certainly the stealth with the design, the maneuverability, again, the speed and the thrust uh, vectoring. The integrated avionics, my favorite feature on the F-22 was the FADEC. And it was my favorite feature because initially I hated it. I hated the fact that when I did something with the throttle, the FADEC would get together with the flight control system and they would discuss it in microseconds and figure out if I knew what I was doing. If they agreed with what I wanted to do, then the airplane would do that maneuver. If they didn't, it would do some hybrid of that maneuver. And at first, that angered me. And then I figured out that it was for my own good. <laughs> so again, revolutionary, incredibly innovative. So when you talk about survivability and lethality and maintainability, those are those three big components that when we talk about acquisition programs and putting you know, our nation's dollar into a program, we have to have those. And I can assure you, from the warfighter perspective, we are extremely lethal in the F-22. The speed and the stealth and the ranges that we can employ ordnance, the kinematics that we pass on to missiles and bombs that we employ, exceptionally lethal. Survivable. As a, uh, as a parent, uh, as a taxpayer, taxpayer, it's very important to me that it's survivable, that the men and women that we put in harm's way flying the F-22 powered by the F-119 are going to survive. And I can tell you, uh, the last thing we needed was something to make us more arrogant but flying the F-22 powered by the 119s made us more arrogant. We knew we could survive anything the enemy threw at us with the maneuverability and the speed. And then, of course, the maintainability. That's going to be around for years and years and years. And the fact that the, the maintainers love the engine, that in itself is a, a true testament because, you know, only one group of folks in the Air Force complain more than fighter pilots and its maintainers. I was a previous maintenance officer, so I can get away with saying that. All right, so lastly, I want to, in closing, I want to find a way to congratulate you and thank you um, at the same time. You know, what's the ultimate compliment for folks that spend their life dedicated uh, to making engines, uh, you know, in, in a lot of your case, you know, for the, the warfighter, for the Department of Defense. And I think back to my time in the F-22 from the, out there at Nellis when we were doing operational tests through the IOC celebration at uh, Langley to our first operational uh, deployment where we crossed the date line, didn't go so well, motors performed admirably. The first red flag when we were trying to figure out what we were going to do for the aerial demonstrations so we could go to air shows. Through all of that, we spent hours getting together in working groups and figuring out how to mitigate some of the issues that we had with the F-22 and turn those challenges into opportunities. But during that time, during all those years working all those variety of issues, I have no recollection of us ever being concerned about the reliability of the F-119. As a warfighter, we trust your engine. Congratulations. Thank you.